What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are on our Jeep JK and we are actually putting on a Baxter Performance uh, oil filter adapter um, onto this Jeep, uh, onto our 3.6. And the reason we are is because the factory oil filter on this Jeep, this canister type filter, has no check valve. So all the oil when you turn off the Jeep runs down into the bottom of the oil pan. And then when you fire the Jeep up, it um, has to pump all that oil up to the uh, cams. And while it's uh, starting, waiting for that oil to show up, it sounds like this. Which we hate. This is our third time doing one of these videos. We feel really, really strongly about um, this system and we love Backship Performance. Those guys are fantastic. They're our good friends. Uh, shout out to them for sending us this 2011 through 2013 filter. Um, this is one of the first ones that they finished. Um, up until now, you could only get them for the 2014 and on uh, 3.6 because this is a different part number. Um, but we're super excited to have this. Some people have questioned on the other video whether this is necessary. It's absolutely effective. I don't think that there's any question about that. I think the question is whether it's necessary. And I can tell you, I don't know why for, for the, the price of this system, I don't know why you would want to risk putting additional wear and tear on the Jeep. Um, it is 100% wearing uh, before that oil gets there. That's just the, the nature of metal on metal. So it's doing way more damage by not having that oil there as fast as possible. And this system fixes that problem. So we'll show you once this is on there, we'll fire it up again and uh, you'll see that it will not make that noise. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and install this uh, Baxter Performance adapter. We're super excited. I'm Joel, this is Motors and Mischief and this is our 2013 Jeep Wrangler that's getting a Baxter Performance upgrade. All right guys, so let's see what we got in the Baxter Performance package. So. Baxter Performance takes pride in how they do their packaging. So that came sealed, slipped back, and then you can see everything's all nicely paper wrapped and there's your sticker and all your other stuff that comes with it. All right, we got our sticker to let people know. We've got our uh, air adapters and we got our instructions, which are full color in both sides. Uh, we picked up this um, Napa filter. This is actually a Wix filter. Um, I don't know if all Napas do this, but our local Napa uses uh, Wix. Wix builds them for them and puts their Napa on their same part number and everything. So that's a good filter. We went with that. Um, all right, so now we're ready to, uh, to go ahead and start working on the Jeep. Let's go. Okay, now the way the Baxter Performance System works is um, the cartridge filter is replaced with a um, with their adapter, and then the top of the adapter screws on the regular style um, screw-on filter. The screw-on filter has a oil check valve in it, so the oil sits at the top in that filter, and when the Jeep fires up, um, it's only gotta go from that filter right over to the cams. It doesn't have to get pumped all the way from the bottom, so you don't have to worry about um, not having any oil at startup, so it's wonderful. The way it does that, though, if you um, remove that filter, it's gonna dump oil all over the place, make a big old mess, nobody wants that. So the Baxter Performance System has a check valve built into it, and let me show you. So here is the system. This goes in, takes the place of the cartridge filter, and the spin-on adapter goes at the top here. This is where the adapter goes for the air. So what happens is when this is sitting inside your Jeep, and you're ready to do your oil change on it, you just put a little bit of air pressure to the nozzle that we're gonna install inside of this thing, and it flushes out all of the um, fluid that's in the uh, oil filter and allows you to change out the, uh, the oil filter. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get going on that. All right, for those of you following along at home, this is the difference between the uh, 2013 and earlier, and the 2014 and later. Uh, this does not have the little um, pointy thing on the end. Uh, our previous video, where we did the one for the 2014 and up, did have that, looks like this. Uh -huh. What's going on here? Look at that. Um, if you just got that, you're 2014 and up. If it does not, then 
you look like this. Let's pull out the oil filter out of the Jeep and uh, I'll show you that that end looks like this. See that? No little dagger thing on the end. Okay, so uh, following Baxter's excellent instructions, uh, we wanna take this now that we've got the old one out and we're going to screw it on in right there. You wanna screw it down until it bottoms out and then you wanna back it off. Make sure you don't go more than 180. The reason why you wanna back it off is you need to line up one of those ports where you can get the adapter for the air um, uh, connection. And it's got two, one on each side. And the idea is, is that one of these will be in an inconvenient spot and the other one will be in a convenient spot. So there's a little um, block off plug that goes in the inconvenient spot. And then wherever the other one ends up is the one that you want to put the air chuck in. So, um, or not the air chuck, but the air fitting. We're screwing in dry, no uh, O-rings so that it can just go down and we can figure out the placement on the, um, the air uh, adapter. All right, and we've run into a little problem. That line right there, this guy, is a hard line, and he's in the way for being able to get this to line up. So we're gonna pop him off and move him out of the way. All right, so we had to take this big one out of the way too. I just unplugged it and then shoved it out of the way. Neither one of those was a problem. With this screwed all the way down, it looks like we've got a couple of different places for the air. This is, we can come back 180, so we could come like this, but this is where the alternator is running. Um, you won't have the zip tie. The zip tie is holding on a uh, VVT sensor that I haven't got around to replacing. Uh, the clip broke on it while we were four-wheeling and that temporary fix has been on there for about a year and a half now. So um, I think that the best place for this is actually just go ahead and let it be all the way bottomed out and we'll put our air chuck right here. Um, so we'll go ahead and mark this side and that's the side that we'll put our um, block off fitting in. And then once this is all the way screwed back down with the O-ring on it, then we'll put our air filter uh, or air adapter right there. Okay, going ahead and marking the one that we need to plug with a piece of tape just to be extra safe. And then we'll pull this out of here. Okay, now we know it's that port because we got our little tape mark, so we'll go ahead and fill that up with the adapter. That's this guy. These are pipe fittings, uh, or pipe threads, meaning that um, there's an interference fit. Uh, Dr. Torque explained it in the previous video. And this is a pipe fitting. And so as you tighten this, the two threads are slightly different from each other. And so it causes a interference fit. And binding. so it binds against each other and causes the seal. Good description. Okay, per the directions from Baxter, uh, they want us to lubricate this and then install it. Um, we're following the directions exactly because Baxter Performance is a couple of incredibly smart gentlemen and they know what they're doing. So uh, we're gonna follow the directions exactly and not try to improve on them. Okay, you're just lubing that with a little bit of motor oil. And then we'll go ahead and install. Okay, and that's good and tight. 
Okay, the next step is a little different than our previous video. Um, our previous video on the newer engines, uh, you just put the adapter in and everything's fine. On this one, we've got this bypass valve built into the Jeep right there. You can kind of see it um, on the side there. Actually, I'm gonna flip you guys upside down so you can get a good look. Uh, right there, you can see it. So that silver part is the bypass. Um, that needs to come out. So we're actually going to cut these supports right below um, this using a pair of diagonal cut pliers. You can see on the instructions here, that's how we want to cut it. That's how it'll look when we get done. So we'll go ahead and cut that out and I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, you can see that's what it looks like when it's out. Here's what, let's see, get that on a place where you can see it really well. There's what you're taking out. It's that spring piece that's inside there and that's what you're cutting out. You don't need that bypass anymore. Um, so now that that's out of the way, moving on. Next step is to install the O-ring. That goes right there. Okay, we're gonna install it and then put a little bit of engine oil on it to lubricate it. Okay, so that goes like that. And we'll put a little bit of engine oil on there. Okay, and as you can see, we used a one inch socket, which there's a uh, six sided um, thing built in the top of that so that you can use it to tighten it up. Um, you do not have to go all the way down until that's tight. You take it down, you seat it, and then you adjust it to the spot that you want it to be in. And then you can use this thing to tighten it up. In our case, fully tight is exactly where we want it to be. So we will go ahead and tighten that up so that it's not sitting in there loose, but for us, it's not actually necessary because we wanted this, this is where our air filter or our air fitting ended up right there. The okay, next step is with a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, go ahead and tighten up your lock right there. All right, that's good and tight for us. And again, it was not necessary because we had it bottomed out, but um, yours yours may not be. So um, again, you can back it up, up to less than 180 degrees and then use this to lock it into place. Okay, next step is to put the Schrader valve in. Um, you can put it in with just the valve or you can use the 90 degrees, um, just depending on how much access you've got. Ours is going in right here, so we actually have plenty of room to put this in directly, but that thing right there might end up in the way when you're trying to get the chuck on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the 90 in, that way it's pointed straight up and we don't have to worry about it. All right, so I've gotten this as tight as I can with my hands. Need to be able to tighten that up now. And a little trick that Baxter pointed out, take a 15 16 open-ended wrench, take your plastic plug adapter out, just like that. There we go. Okay, that's installed. Nice little trick. Thank you, Baxter Performance. And uh, now we'll screw this into place. Okay, got that good and tight. And that's done. Okay, last step is to go ahead and install our um, Wix filter. Perfect. All right, and there you have it guys, all installed. Looks great. Okay, now when it comes time to go ahead and fire this up and it will make noise the first time because this filter's empty of fluid. That'll be the last time it does that. After 
that oil filter fills up with oil, it will always have oil in it until it comes time to change the oil on this thing. And then all you do is you put a minimum of 30 PSI to this air truck or the Schrader valve. You unscrew the little cap, put your air ride on there and that evacuates all the oil out of there so it doesn't make a mess. It also comes with this sticker that you can put next to the oil filter. Uh, there's a QR code right there. So when you take it in, if you take it into the Jeep dealership or whatever to get it worked on, um, they can just scan that and it will give them step-by-step -step instructions for how to um, remove that filter without, uh, without making a mess. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fire that up, fill that up, and um, then we'll put the top back on and it'll be good to go. Okay, went and fired up off camera and just double checked everything. It, uh, it runs great, no oil leaks, everything's totally fine. Jeep's perfectly happy. So now what we're gonna do is um, that the factory system is supposed to retain oil for um, I think like an hour. And um, in my experience, it seemed to only retain it for like 20 minutes on this Jeep. It was constantly making that rattling sound uh, when it first fired up. So now that um, that's in and we've run it and filled that filter with oil, I'm um, gonna go ahead and let this sit for a couple hours. Uh, it'll be a couple seconds for you guys and uh, then we'll fire it up and see how it looks. All right guys, Jeep has been sitting for like six hours and uh, we have been working on uh, all of that stuff over there. If you're a fan of motorcycles, check out the channel. We'll have the video up on that pretty soon. We're doing a refurb on that trailer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set you guys down and then uh, we'll fire up the Jeep and see if it makes that noise. Problem solved, that's awesome. I'm sure you guys could hear that. It sounded real obvious before on the video and uh, it didn't make that sound at all. So we're not damaging our cams on startup anymore. So um, let's see guys. Uh, so that's Baxter Performance uh, Oil Filter Adapter and uh, link will be in the description for uh, this year and the other year, and this can be used on the 3.6. Um, the newer ones can be 3.6, it's also 3.2. So uh, we've got videos on all three of those, and uh, we'll link those at the uh, link those in the description, and we'll link um, back to performance in the description for you guys. Go show them some love. It's an awesome product. Um, stick around, check out the channel. There's all kinds of cool stuff. We got. Uh, Jeep Grand Cherokees, like that one that's sitting out there. Uh, we got motorcycles, we got other Jeeps, we got the F-250 over there. Check it all out. Uh, if you liked it, give us a thumb up. All right, thanks guys so much. Peace. All right, went ahead and fired it up. Um, off camera. <laughs> oh man. <laughs>